G'day, Dylan O'Donnell here. I had a dream that all astronomers were created equal. It's never okay to persecute a minority, even if they're visual astronomers. We must remember, visual astronomers are people too. And what a consenting adult does between them and their telescope outside of closed doors is up to them. Anyway, g'day, my name is Dylan O'Donnell from the Wyron Bay Observatory. I've been super busy lately. I've been doing a few secret projects which I can't tell you about just yet, but good stuff is coming. In the meantime, I've put the RASA back on. The RASA 11 inch, my first RASA and one of my favorite telescopes. It's been a long time. I think it's actually possibly been years because I've been doing so much work with the C11 up at nearly three meter focal length, but it's winter. It's the Southern hemisphere. The sky is full of big red hydrogen rich emissions. I think it's perfect now to get this wider 620 millimeter focal length out and put to the test what I've learned doing the high focal length stuff back to the easy stuff because Shooting at f2 with a RASA is super easy. It's almost cheating. But with all astronomy, you get better over time. And I'm better now this year than I was last year. And that's why a lot of us go back to the same targets again and again and again. Anyway, let me show you what's going on. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. This is actually residential flashing. It looks kind of uh, spacey, I reckon, and it's clean enough, so I don't mind it. And there was that one time where water got in and it did short my entire house, so I can't have that happen again. And she is back, the 11 inch RAS. Let me show you how I've got this set up. I did install the Celestron Focuser. It's a prototype, so it's a bit rough looking, but uh, it does the job. Back to a traditional guide scope. I've been using off-axis guiding for a while now, so it is a pleasure to go back to a guide scope that I can just focus and it stays focused between filters and I don't have to worry about any of that. It just works solid. Oops, I accidentally left off the dehumidifier last night and that's what happens. Skywatcher EQ8 RH Pro is eating it up as usual, especially at such a modest focal length. It's uh, just no problem. I haven't even polar aligned, but I'm super, super lazy. I was very lucky because I haven't tested any of this, but you can see with everything on, I have the counterweights right at the end and I was so lucky that that was actually good balance because I don't have any other counterweights that fit. And at the business end, we have the QHY268M, the fantastic new camera from QHY. It took me a long time to get the spacing sorted out. I basically had just this. It was so close, it was one millimeter off getting focus. And what I had to do was use this special shim here, which QHY provide with their cameras to get that perfectly in. And I've got my little Star Arizona magnetic filter drawer here. Hydrogen alpha in there at the moment. I don't know if you can see this, but right down in there is a small web with a small spider. It's nothing too bad to worry about just yet. I don't use any chemicals or anything like that on the telescope. This does have protective coatings. Just the wipe with some spit is all you need. Did it work? Of course it worked. Do you think I'm some kind of hack? I think it's time for a quick feel good astronomy montage. And then I'll give you a quick overview of the processing and how I got to the image. I used two minute subs on all filters and got a lot, a lot of HA. First I run image calibration, doing flats and then darks. Then I blink everything, looking for UFOs and asteroids, subframe selector. Already at this point though, I was pretty excited about the hydrogen alpha, it just looks bonkers. Once I've stacked all of the filters into separate stacks that are all registered the same way, uh, then use the channel combination tool. Looks like a hot mess really. Color calibration, background neutralization, there's CNR, and that's a Hago palette by the way. Starless version looks dope AF and we all secretly love it. Photoshop, I can drop the star layer back in. Another layer of stars. I'm showing you this on a video camera. Let me show you how it's meant to look. I 
hope you enjoyed that episode. I enjoyed filming it. I'm sorry I haven't posted much lately. It will all be clear soon, I promise. Thank you for tagging me in your images and thank you for listening to my Music for Telescope series. It's Creative Commons. You can use that music in any of your projects, whether that's space related or not, although obviously I prefer the space stuff. It's non-lyrical, non-distracting, it's kind of space music. If they ever get round to building the space elevator, this is the sort of music I'd like to hear in it. All I ask is that you leave me a credit and share with me what you're doing because I just love seeing the work out there being used. Same for my astro photos, they're all free, just go for it. With the astro photos, you don't even need to credit me. They're all just free. That's it from me, my name is Dylan O'Donnell. Hope you get some clear skies. Remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.